Hi, everyone. So excited to have you here today to talk about today's micro learning, which is how to master meaningful content creation with Jeremy, Jeremy Boisino. For those who are new to Community of Seven micro learnings, the purpose is really to help our listeners uh, elevate their mindset and their skill set by bringing in leading executives, thought leaders, coaches, founders, and subject matter experts. Our goal is really to democratize leadership development for all. That's why we make these micro learnings open to the public and free. And I want to thank uh, Community of Seven's core members and supporter members for making this possible. Um, so I don't know how many of you are introverts, but I was a introvert and had social anxiety when I was younger. So I've always thought of myself as more of the behind the scenes kind of person, though our community that watches our live streams, our community of seven live streams and interact in our social posts are pretty varied. We got some uh, extroverts, introverts, ambiverts, and we span the continent. I like to think that many of you guys are like me, the introverts, the empaths, the givers in the world. As such, I posted on LinkedIn today, I don't know if, if you've seen it, sorry for the repetition, but I posted this image that I had seen online, and it was an image that simply said, rest in peace to the opportunities we missed because of shyness and low self-esteem. That hit hard. I'm not going to read the whole thing uh, in terms of my post, but I want to share some of it because I think it's really relevant for this conversation. Stop hiding behind your fears. Worse, letting other people take credit for your hard-earned work. Ask yourself this. As I promote others, who is building my personal brand? Who is ensuring my success? Let me share this sobering fact no one will advocate for your career as much as you will. No one. So earlier in my career, I was told I wasn't a good writer, that I wasn't leadership material, that I wasn't a dynamic speaker. Today, I'm a professional speaker and focused on leadership mindset development. I have a book, Do This Daily, and I just got the, the I guess, the sample copy today, Secrets to Finding Success, Happiness, and Purpose in Work and Life, and it's coming out April 2nd. But here's the thing. I didn't wait for someone to validate me. I just wrote the book. And I hope you that are listening today don't wait for someone to give you permission to post on LinkedIn today. Don't let those who don't believe in you make you a believer. On the contrary, you should always be your biggest cheerleader. It can be difficult to stifle the noise and do what's initially uncomfortable for you. But I promise that once you do, the world opens up and it gets easier. Everything you want is on the other side of fear. So take that first step then keep on going. I didn't earnestly post as myself land fan until almost two years ago. I was at home with my mom who is has advanced dementia. And I just remember seeing her and asking myself, who's going to tell my story? And I realized that I was making myself small. And I had internalized a lot of the self-doubt that others has, have imposed on me, whether it was teachers, parents, bosses, et cetera. And there was this realization that I wasn't just afraid to post because I was in, an introvert. I was afraid to post because I doubted myself. I was like, who has, who cares what I think? Why, why does it matter? And um, in response to my post, um, Casey, and I'm going to read your, Casey O had responded to my post today. Um, and Casey O, I'm going to uh, read it if you don't mind. Um, I was one of the invisible ones until I became a mother. I realized that I couldn't hide, especially 
when I am always teaching my children the importance of being their authentic selves. Let's have our true colors shine through in everything we do. So I think that's like a powerful premise. If you cannot do it for yourself, if you cannot value your voice, then do it for others. How can you help others? And that was the pivotal moment when I started to really start posting every day. Prior to that, I had been posting as my company Community of Seven. And some of you guys follow Community of Seven, but maybe not necessarily my post. But I was hiding behind the shadows. And then I really started to think, what would my daughter think? She's watching me, right? And so the whole notion of posting on LinkedIn and social felt icky and self-serving. And that's just not who I am. And so I reframed it. And I was like, what if I could just help one person reading my post? What if I could change one life? Just one person reading my post. And I think there's this misconception that you need to have thousands and thousands of followers and all of these likes and all of these comments. I know that's how I felt initially. When I was first posting, I would maybe get one or two likes. And usually that was my brother, Van, <laughs> that was liking my post. And some of my friends like Barbara out in Atlanta. And it can feel self-conscious. But when I reframe things and just focused on how can I help others, it really opened things for me. And so I'm not going to really talk about the whole why it's important. I could run the whole gamut in terms of career development, helping others, the fact that you can really, in terms of businesses, elevate your career, find your next opportunity, thought leadership, personal branding. It goes you know, down. There's so many different reasons why you should be posting. And that's why I have Jeremy today. I'm so excited to introduce today's guest, Jeremy Boisino. Jeremy is a serial entrepreneur and the founder of uh, Favicon, a creator ranked platform that helps people um, and founders identify niche influencers. Favicon is a pioneering AI powered creator marketing tool designed for optimizing influencer and social media strategy. With his extensive experience in the digital marketing sphere and a deep understanding of AI's role in content creation, Jeremy brings invaluable insights into the art of meaningful content creation on LinkedIn. He's viewed over 100,000 um, creators this past year. So if there is an expert on LinkedIn, this is your guy. <laughs> Hello, Jeremy. Welcome. Thank you so much for <laughs> having me here. And it was a very powerful speech. Yeah, it's, even for myself, it inspired <laughs> me to create even more content in the next few weeks. And I apologize in advance uh, for my sick French accent for the, for the anecdote I actually studied in, at the University of Michigan. And I bought a book, How to Get an American Accent. <laughs> and it was a huge scam, as you can see, because I never managed to get uh, rid of it. But yeah, you're it's... reading it. No one can hear your accent. <laughs> exactly. exactly. That's what that's why I started writing, because when you write on LinkedIn, now, it's, it's, people can't know how, how French I sound. Trust me, though, Americans love French accents. I so know, you got it. <laughs> Trust me, I know. I've been I've been there. <laughs> so yeah, thank uh, you so much. Uh, just for the anecdote, uh, going back on what you were saying about people are lurker, lurkers on LinkedIn, a few weeks ago, I wrote a post and it was a huge flop. Like I was so depressed because it took me so long to write it. I thought it was super cool. And I was on the verge of actually deleting it. And I was like, okay, never mind. I just keep it that way. And it turns out a few weeks later, I got in touch with a big CEO from Brazil yeah. who actually read this post but wow. he didn't like or anything he didn't comment or anything and for us we got a huge deal because of this post so if i actually removed the post yeah would have never seen. so this kind of anecdote shows you that on linkedin people are looking like reading your posts way more than you think so especially on linkedin the engagement is super low uh, compared to other platforms so you should never pay too much attention uh, when it comes to likes comments mm -hmm. shares and I'm sure Daniel will uh, agree with me because uh, yeah. he's adamant about it. And, you know, it's interesting, too. And if you don't feel comfortable posting, interacting in the comments is so powerful. So I've gotten probably 10, 15 percent of my speakers just from someone commenting on one of my posts. 
And so there's opportunity because I see their post. I'm like, oh, that's a very articulate answer. And I'll check their profile. And I'm like, oh, look, at they are a trauma expert or they are a work-life balance expert or a sleep expert. I've literally gotten 15% of my speakers straight from someone interacting in the comments. And so when you think about thought leadership, it's not just posting, it's also engaging with other people. And the way we connected, Jeremy, I was honored. You had linked me because I was I was in the, one of the top 100 for Fabicon's list of, of creators. And that's not something I expected, but it was, I thought it was really interesting because then I started reading through your content and I thought it was really valuable. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you here because one of the things you had said on Twitter last year really uh, resonated with me. It, can, is it okay if I read your, sure, this is in the voice of Jeremy. I've, without a French accent, I've analyzed thousands of social media profiles. I can confidently say if a creator has the word influencer or their number of followers in their bio, they're really not influential at all. <laughs> no, but it's true. There is a strict correlation. I'm convinced. And I, I think our people from India are in the chat and it was like way worse for India when we released the top. They all had this number of followers in the description but it doesn't make sense you don't define yourself by your number of followers or by your audience you define yourself with like what you do I don't know, with your passion with your job whatever but not the number of followers it doesn't make sense yeah no definitely it's really interesting because there's that trend like I know for me as an introvert I felt so uncomfortable posting because I don't consider myself an influencer I don't consider myself even a content creator. I like helping people. And I think sometimes that initial barrier, you feel a fraud. <laughs> what am I to post something? And I think part of that is how do you get past that barrier? What recommendation would you have for people who are just starting off and creating content on LinkedIn to like get, why should they create content? And also, why did you choose LinkedIn? Because I know you mainly focus on LinkedIn, your company. Is that correct? Or do you focus on other platforms? Right now, we're, we're focusing heavily on LinkedIn because there's a huge opportunity when it comes to uh, creators because nothing has been done in this space. Because like you said, LinkedIn creators, it's basically a new thing. There was yeah. no such thing as a LinkedIn creator or influencer two, three, or four years ago. So that's a huge opportunity in the space right now for everybody listening there's no competition whatsoever. When you compare LinkedIn to Instagram or, or Twitter or YouTube or you know, the big social medias right now, uh, there's so much self-censorship when it comes to mm. posting on LinkedIn. That yeah. You have like literally like a, such a big opportunity to have people actually read your content. And mm -hmm. so that's the first reason why you should definitely express yourself because the, the audience is there. And the competition is way lower than on uh, other social medias. And you were mentioning Twitter uh, right now. It's super difficult uh, to build an audience because yeah. the, the social media has been around for like, 15 years. There's already lots of people with a big audience, so it's super difficult. So that's the first reason. And the second reason you should really ask yourself is you really have nothing to lose. If people don't see your, your post because you're flopping by, by nature, no one's going to see it. So... There's yeah. nothing to be scared of. <laughs> when, you, when you understand this mindset, it's much easier. Okay, I'm going to post. No one's going to see it. So, okay, I just uh, keep doing you, it. You make such a good point, Jeremy, because people are like, I'm so embarrassed about posting. But if no one's seeing your content, you have nothing to be embarrassed about. <laughs> That's yeah, the worst thing that could happen, exactly. right? <laughs> and also, you're overestimating what people think of. It's a traditional I don't know, psychology thing or people think that uh, you... All the people are going to judge you, but no one cares. No one cares. The, everybody's focused on their own game, on their own job or whatever daily tasks. They're not going to spend even 10 seconds saying, wow, this boss is so bad. Wow, what a shitty creator. No one cares, really. So it's just like you, you have everything to gain by posting on LinkedIn because it's going to drive you so much, so many opportunities can be personal. You can, you can make friends. And I know many people on LinkedIn, they've made really good friends to their to the to posting on LinkedIn, they've also managed to get super nice opportunities when it comes to professional careers. Like for instance, at Savicon, uh, if you have a good LinkedIn profile, if you create content, 
your value is going to go really up. And I know it's the same for me, HR managers, people are going to really, it's going to be only a plus for you if you create content. So again, you have nothing to lose. And when it comes to being interesting, we are all interesting in our own way. The, the mistake most people do is they try to copy past content from the most successful creators. And that's a trap many people fall into and they should nev never ever do that. You should really follow your own path. You're interesting because you're yourself. And the more personal you're going to get, the more interesting you're going to be. And uh, people so somehow think that by copying the, the best creators out there, the, the most popular ones, they're going to be interesting. But no, they're not popular because uh, they create a specific kind of content. They're popular because they're famous. They speak about their, they have their own storytelling. So just find your own path. That'd be uh -huh. my number one uh, advice. So... Jeremy, you've studied over 100,000 creators on LinkedIn this past past year while you were doing all of the global lists. What makes a successful creator? What Are there any kind of common traits? And I know you have the list, top list, but then you also have it based on different categories like DEI or leadership or whatnot. What is like the common thread? If you were to look at a creator, what are some of the common traits that they have? It's going to sound cliche, but you need to be, you need to be there. You need to post on a, on a regular basis. You need to, you don't, you should never force yourself to be like, okay, I need to post every day or like 10 times a, day, a week. If you think the, the good reason for you is three times a week, go with three times a week. It's good enough. What's really important is to set up like a, a regular schedule, which you're going to stick to because what I've noticed from other regions is that people love stability. So if you post every Tuesday and keep doing that way for weeks and people are going to be used uh, to having you in their feeds. And this is the way you're going to be able to build up uh, a community, to build up an audience because people are going to get used to your content. But again, it's a long-term game. You can't expect uh, to have results in, the, in the, the first few weeks. And I think that's the hard part because uh, people who are making it on LinkedIn and on social media in general are people who are sticking it out. It's not cliche at all. Like, the common character I find with influencers from all countries, because like you said, we've been doing tops from our, all regions, and it's always the people who have been, who've been around for a while, who just keep doing it every day or every two days or whatever, but they're always here and they never give up. Because at some point, like I told you two months ago, I almost deleted a post, even myself. Like I've been in the game now for, uh, for for two years and even myself, I got demoralized because you know, you spend so much time on something and then you want something to be big and then you're disappointed, but never ever do that. Just keep doing what you do and at some point it's going to pay off. If you find your personal tone, if you find uh, your your own direction and that's really the, the, the thing that's really important to have credibility in what you do. That'd be, that'd be, that's something I've noticed in all the creators from all countries. And this personal stuff, this personal touch, you need to find it. What's really special about you? Is there something you really want to focus on? And I think before even you start to get serious on LinkedIn, you need to ask yourself this question. So who am I? What am I good at? You're good at something. I'm sure you're good at where it can be writing. It can be at, at like storytelling. It can be at your job. It can be in expertise. There's so many things to, to write on. I'm sure there's something you can find. You make a really good point in that it's about consistency and the people who are successful are the ones who have consistently posted for whether a year or two year or whatnot. I think it's also important to note that it's not too late for those who want, might want to just start posting today that LinkedIn, as you mentioned, was is still nascent, right? It's still poly of all of the different social platforms like Instagram or YouTube. And I post in probably all the platforms and LinkedIn is all is my favorite. It's probably more the style of LinkedIn, like people want deeper content, right? Whereas Instagram is more visual. It's not too late for the folks who are watching it. Um, it's super early. Honestly, I don't think we're even at the, we're still at the very beginning of uh, LinkedIn. Of yeah. B2B, what I would call B writing, social media. There's never been something like LinkedIn before. Yeah. Because Twitter was always the short uh, form content, but LinkedIn is going to be even bigger in the next few years. So uh, definitely not too early to get started. Yeah. How do you get 
companies and leaders to notice you? I, I don't know if that's an answer that you feel comfortable answering with, but because I know you are B2B and you're looking for customers as well. What works? Be interesting. Be interesting. That's your, that should be your number one priority is to be honest with yourself. I always try to be honest with myself. For instance, when I'm done with a post, with a draft, I'm like, okay, if I'm, I don't know, this, who I'm trying to attract, would I be interested in post? Be honest with yourself. And most of the time, you'd be surprised. If you do this this uh, little game, you'd be like, okay, no, that's that deep. That's not that interesting. I need to find another angle or something. So yeah, be interesting. And like you mentioned before, you still, it's not enough to post content. You need to be also active a little bit on, on other posts. It's uh, what the, the thing is, people conf- get confused when they get told that they need to comment on the other posts because they think they can comment anything. Yeah. Uh, you've seen the surge of AI-generated comments, which is really a, a, a plague right now on LinkedIn. Don't do that. But be interesting in your comments as well. So Are people you, actually paying or uh, bots yeah. to comment on their post? Not on their, under their own posts, but they yeah. pay. Like they literally have their list of influencers they want to reach, I don't know, 20 or 30 people, and they pay these products so that they comment automatically uh, with ChatGPT under their post. And oh, it wow. shows like big time, but I'm sure everybody here who's uh, posted content on LinkedIn have had this kind of comment like, great post, thank you so much, this kind of stuff. This is not interesting at all. So you need to be interesting in yeah. your post, and you need to be interesting in your comments. And don't try to be like to do 50 comments or something. Just 10 comments a day is enough. It can literally take you 10 minutes. If you have uh, some discipline, you spend 10 minutes with, uh, with 10 people you want to reach. You prepare your comment and uh, that's it. It takes you like 20 minutes to do the whole exercise. So yeah, that'd be my obsession. If I want to get started from scratch is to try to be interesting under either an expertise or around the storytelling around myself. So I'm sure, again, all of you, if you don't have a specific expertise, you you have your own personality, you have your own career around which you can create easy content and in the end be interesting because people are interested in stories. They're interested in what you have to say about even things that for you seem really mundane. People are interested because again, there are not that many people who actually do this on LinkedIn. So between someone who actually tell about their lives and someone who just share their careers updates, their CVs, their resumes, you, you're going to be like 20 times more uh, interesting than uh, this kind of people. So once you have this mindset, it's going to be way easier for you to express yourself. Put yeah. it simply. I think what's helped me is just that question of, okay, how can I help someone reading this post? And that's been like the game changer for me. Like, how can I educate someone? How can I support someone? And when you have it, like where you have, you focus on your audience and you're like, how can I help this one person reading it? It, it, for me, it's been really helpful, like in terms of creating content. So talking about creating content. So my friend, Mita Malik, who's also in the top 100 list for Fabicon, Mm -hmm. We talk about this all the time and I've had her on my, uh, on our micro learning and like her, we don't, she doesn't really have a social media calendar. Um, I know for me, when I post, sometimes I, I, my daughter is in fourth grade right now. So there's a lot of driving her to activities and all this other stuff. 50, 60% of my posts are literally me in the car waiting for her, um, or um, when it's warmer, I usually take a um, like a 30, 40 minute walk after I drop her off at the bus station. And I'm literally posting while I'm walking. And What's... I know some people are more disciplined and they have a social media calendar. Is there an approach that you take and recommendation on how people should figure out what they post daily or by? No, that's super interesting. It's, it may be counterintuitive, but the more you post, the easier it gets. Because then there's this like this mental exercise where, they, like you said, you'd be I don't know, like showering or driving your car, and you're gonna think about your post. Like it, it's gonna come naturally. Oh, I should post about this. And it's really always at the moments you never expect that you're gonna have a great idea. For instance, I'm a biker, so I love to bike in the streets of Paris, and it's always when I'm biking that I have these ideas coming up because I just I'm never in front of a computer thinking about 
okay, what am I going to post? No, it's always at these moments that you get the most creative. When you know that you're going to post every day, when you it gets into a ha habit, it's like sports. It's like when you start working out at the, at the beginning, it's going to be super difficult to be motivated. But uh, after a few months, it's going to turn into a habit. And you're never going to ask yourself, okay, should I go to the gym? You're just going to go to the gym because it's going to turn into a habit. So you need to be in this mindset. And once you've reached it, it's so much easier. Really, it's super easier. Like it's, I know it sounds cliche, but if you force yourself, like at the gym, after a few months, all the posts, you're going to have too many ideas. Literally, you're going to have too many ideas. You're going to have your app on your iPhone, and you're going to start writing down ideas for posts because you're going to have ideas coming up. Just write them down and you're going to have like a 15 or 20 ideas stacked because you're always into this mindset. Yeah. One of my college professors at Stanford had this, had this really great, I guess, quote. And he, when we were writing, he, uh, it was English class. He would say for the waste basket, which is too many times we want perfection. And so we don't even start because we, have all of these, what am I going to, and his thing was right for the wastebasket. And, and I think that might be why it's helpful when I'm in my car waiting for my daughter. I'm not really caring about writing the perfect post. For those of you who've read my post, I have a lot of typos a lot of times because literally I'm walking or I'm like not spell checking. I'm like literally in my car in between meetings. So I'll just post something up with spelling errors, and I'll come back later and fix those errors. That whole notion of letting go of perfection, just writing the content is, is super helpful. Tell me a little bit more about Favicon, because it's not just based on pure numbers, because there's definitely more creators that have more, way more followers than I that might not have been on the list. How did you determine different metrics in terms of engagement or whatnot? Like, how was the list selected? Because there's some and I, I've seen you post about this on social where there are some people who are link farms or something like that, where people connect to just like each other's comments. And then they might have yeah. tons of followers or they're sharing, resharing and hash, rehashing other people's content, but it's not really authentic conversations and relationships. Can you little talk a little bit more about um, your list? What makes a great creator and why? Okay, so first, the number of followers right now in the social media industry in general and all social media in general, it's not that important anymore. You wouldn't believe how many influencers uh, we stumbled upon on LinkedIn, especially with literally hundreds of thousands of followers, and they have three to four likes every post. You know, these this social medias, even LinkedIn, they've been around for a while, so they have accumulated followers when they're like this first mover advantage. It doesn't mean anything anymore. Like seriously, the number of followers, forget about it. It's not important. Like for us, the way we do it, we take into account everything. So it's going to be, like you said, the engagement, but it's going to be the activity. It's going to be like the growth rate. And for us, the growth is super important because the ability still to get people following you through your content is super powerful. And we've noticed that the best creators usually, like even the, the smallest one, if you manage to go from, 5,000 followers to 6,000 followers, like in within a week, it saves something. Whereas having a lot of comments and a lot of likes right now, it can be easily cheated. Like you said, there are right now many engagement pods. What you were mentioning before is literally people having these big groups and they are like uh, liking uh, one another, their posts. So it's, we've noticed with Daniel, which I'm working with Daniel uh, on a like uh, informal basis because he's a, uh, passionate about, about this. He really wants to fight uh, those, those practices. And we've noticed a lot of people using them. So that's where right now we're really trying to crack down on. And that's the reason why for us, the engagement rate is not that important right now. It's going to be more about the growth. It's going to be more about the activity. And that's why you're going to see people with tons of followers and that they're not going to be in the top 200 because it doesn't have that much uh, value anymore. And uh, I think it's much more interesting also to have the uh, rising creators put in the spotlight because our, our very mission at Favicon and in the first place was really to highlight those, those creators, like even yourself, maybe if you do great work. Uh, we noticed there was nothing to reward them, to give them some sense of accomplishment. And uh, you've seen all these lists before. I'm, I'm sure you've seen these tops, top lists before, and they're all really biased. 
because they're not based on real data. So it's going to be about who you know, about being friend with the, the, the person who does the list. And also, of course, it's not perfect on method, even though we've been working with a data scientist, it's always the algorithm, what you're going to pick, there's always going to be some kind of human bias, but at least there's something tangible we want to uh, rely on and something that's not going to be screwed by a human, uh, by humans, to, to, to put it simply. So that's that's why we started uh, our approach in, in the first place. So let's talk about algorithm, LinkedIn <laughs> algorithm. So I know they recently changed it and yeah. LinkedIn has ebbed and flowed. In, in the beginning, it was like strict business and you didn't talk about feelings or personal stuff on LinkedIn. Then the pandemic happened and changed everything and people wanted that human interaction. We wanted to know that you're human, not just a a corporate being, right? And so the algorithm rewarded engagement and a lot of the engagement were based on people who were authentic and told stories and all that other stuff. I feel like it's changing back where it's focused more so on content that is relevant to your profession opposed to personal. I feel like the algorithm changes probably every four or five, six months. What can you... Like, can you talk more about the algorithm? Is it important for us to, the folks who are watching this, understand it, know it, or write for the algorithm? Or is that kind of BS? Honestly, you should never, ever have the algorithm in mind uh, for two reasons. Because number one reason is you should be obsessed with being interesting. That should be your number one obsession, number two, number three. Second reason is that no one knows for sure what's behind the algorithm. And if you follow like the LinkedIn gurus telling you about the algorithm, you're going you're gonna to end up, in the end, copying, pasting content that all the people do. And that's, you should never do that. You should really follow your own path. And of course, you should know, like in general, what works, what doesn't work. But really, it should not, never be right now in your, in your mind. I think it's, there's so much op- opacity when it comes to the LinkedIn algorithm. For sure, there's been some major changes. What I can say, first, like you said, there was like a time where selfies were super powerful. That was ridiculous. You could just take a selfie and have the have a lot of engagement, have a lot of reach. What we've noticed uh, first, right now, the short form posts work really well. I like Twitter. If you do a post with only two or three sentences, it's super powerful. We've noticed that. So I don't know if there's like a uh, something scientific or something if the, the algorithm is pushing this kind of content but you know that LinkedIn is fighting hard to be an alternative to Twitter so maybe they're since they're trying to be an alternative they giving more power to this kind of content that's really reminiscent of what what's on Twitter in general two tweet sentences on Twitter so that's the number of thing we've noticed and the second thing is the video format, which works really well right now. So I know that LinkedIn, they have big plans to do more videos for creators. So if you do videos, I think right now it's, it's working really well. But again, there is no like transparency when it comes to algorithm. There is no straight rule. What works for someone uh, might not work for you. It's good to know, but it should never be an obsession. Right. I want to read one comment. Carolyn says, does anyone else get lots of followers that are simply people wanting to sell me some service? So I'm going to answer this because I know this from experience. When I first was like on LinkedIn, I would literally accept everyone. That was a bad decision because literally my whole inbox were sales calls, sales calls. So what I did was I enabled it where you needed to know my email in order to add me. And then I started being a lot more selective with who... I accepted, I guess, in my connection. And it's not to be like elitist or or anything. It's just basically you have so much bandwidth. And LinkedIn can get overwhelming, especially when you start having so many followers. And so there's ways that you can curate your LinkedIn so that you only add your email. And I think it's really important to make sure you add connections that are real connections opposed to just trying to increase your follower account. I don't know if you have a POV on that, Jeremy. I think when you're getting started, uh, it's hard to distinguish sellers to others. So I think it'd be difficult to, to do that. 
But yeah, definitely can be overwhelming at the beginning. I, honestly, I would disagree with you on that one. I think when you get started, you should not to discriminate too much because mm-hmm. I don't think that matters. Just don't respond to them. <laughs> I love that. So last question, content optimization. Can you discuss some strategies for creating impactful LinkedIn content that really stands out? How do you ensure that your content is not only seen, but also remembered? And I think you answered it that earlier, but let's dig into that. You need to find your own tone. Uh, you need to know what you're going to talk about. Stop just be random stuff. Like, don't talk about the, the weather on Tuesday, then about sport on Wednesday. It's really important that people know what they're following you for. And that's the number one mistake that like beginning creators do is that they think they just need to create content because they, you get those LinkedIn gurus saying that you need to just post, create content, that's not true. You first really need to find your own voice. So before you start to do these posts that are going to take you time, really, okay, what do I want to talk about? What's my expertise? Do I want to have more like storytelling content? Do I want to talk about SEO because I'm an SEO expert? Do I want to talk about politics? The, the great thing about LinkedIn right now is that you can talk about pretty much anything that wasn't the case at all at all two or three years ago. It was super, super corporate. It was only business stuff. But right now, if you look at the Favicon Top 200, you're gonna see like journalists, you're gonna see politicians, uh, you're gonna see people talking about neuroscience. Anything is is, uh, up for grabs. So you need to ask yourself, honestly, what do I want to talk about? And that's the reason why you should never feel forced to do stuff. I'm sure there are many things uh, you're interested in. If you find something like a passion or something you really want to talk about, it's going to be much easier. So don't force yourself doing something because you think it's going to be successful, but it's not going to work. At some point, you're going to get discouraged because in the end, it takes discipline uh, to create content in the long term. And if it's, if you're not interested in uh, what you're doing, it's just not going to cut it. I love that. Closing this up, Jeremy, how can we help you? How can we find you? And also, what's a one piece of advice you'd want to give to the folks who are listening to this, whether in the live Zoom audience or watching this via live stream? Don't be obsessed with or something. Just do something for fun. Life is uh, fun. It should always be a game. If you gamify, gamify your LinkedIn experience, it's going to be much easier. If you see it as a game, like everything is going to be less of a grind. For us, for Favicon, I think there's something super interesting and going to be interesting for everybody that we're going to release in two weeks. We're going to release a new extension, which when you're going to install, it's completely free. You're going to be able to see the stats of the creators, what kind of content they do, at what time they post. So I think that's something that's going to be super helpful for uh, all creators to understand what others, what other people do, what kind of content they produce. So I highly encourage you uh, to follow me on LinkedIn, follow uh, Favicon on LinkedIn, and uh, we're going to do major updates in the next few weeks. Love that. And I will make sure to add the link for Favicon in the comments in the chat. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.